Good morning. Good morning. Um, thank you for allowing me this opportunity to speak to you all. Thank you to my friend, Reverend Ortiz. And again, thank you to you all. Um, what I'm about to share is just a life lesson that I've learned um, through this journey that I have been on. Um, I hope you will indulge me and I hope you get something out of it at the end. Um, again, my name is Lonzo Smith and I teach at Georgia Military College. I'm also the senior admissions counselor and what I do when I teach my students, I teach a class called Perspective. And I attempt to introduce to the students that there is weight in what they think. And that every day is an opportunity for growth and change, but it does require work. And oftentimes that work is a radical, honest, personal assessment. And what I use as the tool to help them with that is the concept of cognitive dissonance and discomfort. Cognition is the mental process of acquiring knowledge and understanding through thought, experience, and senses. Dissonance is the lack of harmony, and discomfort is uneasiness, hardship, and pain. When cognitive dissonance exists in your life, we are experiencing inconsistency or conflict in our beliefs, attitudes, behaviors, and perceptions, and that in and of itself produces discomfort. When we are in cognitive dissonance, we want to reduce that comfort. We want to get back to consistency. We want to get back to balance. And how do we do that? We start focusing on more supportive beliefs. We seek and acquire new information. Or we reduce the importance of the conflicting belief. An example would be a person who smokes. That is a behavior. Knowing that smoking may negatively impact your health, that is the cognition. So what do you do? You focus on the idea that supports your belief that you want to smoke. It is my only unhealthy activity. So I have minimized the impact on my health because I'm exercising, I'm, I'm eating well. So you are back in balance. You are no longer facing cognitive dissonance. And you have re returned to a level of internal consistency. I tend to think that there is power in discomfort, that it brings an opportunity for engagement and change. Oftentimes we want to change, but we don't want discomfort. I want abs, but I'm not exercising or eating well. <laughs> we want a better relationship, but we fail to speak our truth and ask our partner to address our needs. We want a better life, but we have let mediocrity seep into our lives undetected. And over time, that appears to add up to an insurmountable obstacle. We run from discomfort. I believe we have equated comfort to happiness. You can become so comfortable that you're miserable. You have accepted the status quo of your life Comfort has become easy. Prior to March of 2013, my life was perfectly suited for me. I had Dan. We had loved each other since 726 of 1992. We had built a life that was successful for us. We grew a business. I had professional success. We loved our dogs, we had great friends, and we had a son. On March 8th, 2013, I left home. I kissed him goodbye before I left home, went to work, and I received a call from Dan saying, I'm not feeling well. I said, I'll leave, I'll come take you to the hospital or to the doctor. He says, no, I'm calling an ambulance. That rattled my foundation. This was a gym rat. He was fussy about the food he ate and how he managed his body. And on March 10th, 2013, he was gone. I was immediately at rock bottom. I was broken and discomfort was looming. But I knew how to put on a brave face. I knew how to say I was fine 
but discomfort was looming. I began to drink too much. I began to spend too much money, but discomfort was looming. I neglected my personal and professional responsibilities, but discomfort was looming. Our son spiraled out of control. On March 22nd, 2014, my birthday, he crashed his moped, he was drunk, he was high, he ended up in the hospital, comatose, and close to death. He was on the same floor that Dan died. Discomfort was here. But I knew how to do the show. I knew how to do the show. I knew how to show up. It took a friend with peppermint lifesavers to make me realize that I was bankrupt in my thinking. Bankrupt in not trying to ask for help. Bankrupt in not fully mourning my loss. Bankrupt in trying to return to levels of comfort and making others comfortable. I needed to realize at that particular moment I was being forced to recognize the lack of harmony in my life and I needed to embrace the discomfort. My belief that my life would always be perfect for us was being challenged by my new reality. I could no longer reduce the importance of my discomfort and minimize the impact it was having on my life. I made a conscious effort at that particular moment to lean in and stop trying to recreate comfort and equating that to happiness. I needed to realize that I was my catalyst for change and I needed to rescue myself. I needed to realize that there was no testimony without a test. I needed to make my message my message. I needed to realize that comfort and change do not live on the same block. And I needed to stop being defined by the comfortable circumstances that I had created. I needed to be defined by my intention. When you lean in and embrace discomfort, you have to accept that pain is part of the work. Pain is everywhere, in every relationship, in every project, in every job. There is always pain, but there is always a pain-free option. I still don't have abs. <laughs> so I had to stop equating comfort and happiness and realize that in the struggle, there is magic. I had to recognize that the catalyst for change offered me the opportunity for improvement and growth and stretching my limits. I had to be comfortable in discomfort. How did this help me with my loss? How did this help me take my next step? How did this help me? It became my reminder of what I have yet to achieve. To honor our 21 years, to honor the life we had built, to honor the person that he had made me, to honor the person that I am, and to carry forward. Those who elect to remain comfortable never experience the rush that discomfort provides and never know that you are vehicles of massive potential. Instead of shrinking from discomfort, let it guide you toward accomplishment. You can either become comfortable and stagnant or uncomfortable and stretch and grow. Where are you comfortable in your life right now? And what way could this be a sign for your growth? Where are you comfortable in your life right now and in what way could this be a sign for your growth? I talk to my students, and I sometimes hear them say, I don't have time, I'm too busy. Sometimes busyness is just laziness in disguise. 
It is an attempt to remain in a comfort zone and not enter the courage zone. If you cut out all of the meaningless activities that we engage in on a daily basis, TV, news, Facebook, Twitter, Snapchat, YouTube, mindless snacking, what do you have? You have time. You have time. You have time to make yourself uncomfortable, time to pursue a goal, time to do the hard work when you are facing cognitive dissonance. Don't try to get back into balance. Relish the dissonance. Relish the discomfort. Who would you be if you said the things that people didn't want to hear, or defied expectations, or stopped making the comfortable choice? In an increasingly competitive, cautious, and accelerated world, those who are willing to step out of their comfort zone into discomfort reap the biggest rewards. Are we letting fear, failure, and pride keep us comfortable? Ask yourself, do I keep doing what has been done or challenge my assumptions? Do I risk being exposed or vulnerable? Do I ask for what I want and need or what I think others are willing to give me? Do I toot my own horn or just hope that my efforts will go unnoticed? Do I speak my mind? I ask my students and I tell them to cast themselves 10 years from now and think about the life that you want to be living. Who do you want to become in that process? Are you willing to give up the familiar and embrace discomfort? Are you willing to live in the courage zone? Living in discomfort, you will feel pain. You will want to give up. You must, but you must prepare yourself to guard your vision, to take back your control over your motivation. You will be discouraged. The mind is programmed to believe the negative, and this can be contagious. People will attempt to instill fear. You will doubt yourself. You will fail, but remember that each risk gone wrong is a risk gone right because it will inform your next step. And it will all be worth it. It will all be worth it. Discomfort and struggle are necessary. I'm sure you all have probably heard the story of the man who tried to help the butterfly out of the cocoon by slitting the cocoon. The butterfly that emerged had small, unformed wings and soon died. It needed struggle and discomfort to force the fluid into its wings so it could fly. But by shorting the process, the butterfly was doomed. Don't shortcut the process. Live in discomfort. Understand discomfort. Discomfort is hard. We all know that. As children, we are so full of hopes and dreams, but we are so far removed from the jaded world of adulthood. Children have aspirations and relish being defiant. So it is no wonder that the seventh most common first word out of a baby's mouth is no. So choose that opportunity to channel your inner terrible twos. When you're incli inclined to remain in comfort, say no and live in discomfort. Live in discomfort, embrace it. In closing, I'd like to leave you with the words of, of Marianne Williamson. Our deepest fear is not that we are inadequate. Our deepest fear is that we are powerful beyond measure. It is our light, not our darkness that frightens us we ask ourselves, who am I to be brilliant, gorgeous, talented, fabulous? Actually, who are you not to be? Your playing small does not serve the world. There is nothing enlightened about shrinking so others won't feel insecure around you. We are all meant to shine as children do. We're born to make manifest the glory within us. 
It is not just in some of us, it is in every one of us. And when we let our light shine, we unconsciously give others permission to do the same. As we liberate ourselves from fear, our presence automatically liberates others. So I challenge you to live in discomfort, do the work. This is a sign that you are growing. Thank you.